Hey everyone, I'm Paul Scheider from Hedgehog Leatherworks and I'm joining you right now for another video on wilderness survival skills. And I'm going to tell you all about the topic in just a second, but very first thing, if you have not yet seen my video on fox walking and wide angle vision, I want you to hit the pause button right now, go find that video, watch it, and then come back because the techniques that I'm going to unfold in this video are really going to build on the previous one and uh, it's going to be of much more value to you if you watch the video on fox walking and wide angle vision first. So go do that right now if you haven't already. Okay, so let's jump into what we're doing today. Um, the technique I'm going to show you builds on fox walking and wide angle vision. It is called slack lining. And uh, let me give you the background story here really quickly. A lot of you guys out there know that uh, before I got really into the wilderness survival skills, my core passion in life was rock climbing. And uh, I still rock climb a lot, not nearly as much as I used to. It's kind of taken a back seat um, to the wilderness survival stuff since I started Hedgehog Leatherworks. But uh, it's still something very near and dear to my heart. But uh, anyway, one of the skills that I learned from the rock climbing community is something called slacklining. And basically, it's where you stretch a piece of webbing between two trees and you walk on it like it's a tightrope. And um, what climbers use this for is basically to increase their balance and their agility and just general body awareness so that when they're up on the rock, they're capable of doing a lot more. And um, I'm going to show this to you today, um, not because of the rock climbing skill end of things, but because I think it integrates perfectly into the skills of the survivalist. And the reason why is because a lot of times when we're doing these skills, one of the things we talk about a lot is the ability to move through the woods quietly, um, to move through the woods without disturbing the wildlife, um, but rather to kind of go with the flow out here and really be a part of things. One way to enhance your ability to do that is to have better balance and uh, increase awareness of your surroundings. So this technique, this um, method of training is going to basically throw you in the deep end of the water and force you to have extreme balance and, uh, and it's also going to force you to go into wide angle vision. It's almost impossible not to with this technique. So let's get started. All right, so first things first, you're going to need some basic equipment. The very first thing you're going to need is some one inch wide tubular webbing. Um, this stuff is rock climbing grade um, webbing. You can get this at a lot of different outdoor stores like REI and whatnot. And uh, I've got about 50 feet of it here, which is more than enough for most slack lines. The reason I have 50 feet is because sometimes I like to set up a really long one. Um, the reason it's called tubular webbing is because if you look at the very end of it, it is actually a tube even though when it's laid flat, it appears as just one flat piece. So that's the first thing. Um, really about 30 feet ought to do you. I've got 50 right here. The next thing you're gonna want is two 10 foot long lengths of climbing rope. This can be static rope or dynamic. It really doesn't matter, um, but uh, I like to use rope because it's just easier to tie. This could also be webbing, whatever your preference is. The next thing you're going to need is going to be four oval carabiners. Obviously, it's an oval carabiner because it's an oval, and uh, it's a non-locking carabiner, which means you can easily open it up just like this. Again, four of those. And the last thing you're gonna need is one carabiner that is a locking carabiner, which just means it has a screw gate on it like this so that you can put it in the closed position and it will not open back up. For your locking carabiner, it's really nice if this has a large um, surface on one side of it. That'll make things a little bit easier. All right, let me show you how this all fits together. The very first thing we're going to do is secure one end of our slack line to one of our trees that we're gonna stretch it between. And to do this, the very first thing you have to do is take the last little bit of your webbing and you're going to bend about uh, I'd say 10 inches or so back on itself like this so that you have a nice loop and you're going to make sure that the loop lies flat. Then with those two pieces held together you're going to tie a very simple overhand knot just like this and pull it tight and that's going to put a very very strong loop of webbing 
that you can tie directly into for this and you want to leave about a four inch tail just like the one here. So cinch that down really good. Then what you're going to do is take the end of one of your pieces of rope and pass it directly through there just like this. And now with that fed through we're going to go over to our tree here and tie our rope around the tree. I'm going to use a bowline knot for this. The reason that I'm using a bowline knot is because it's one that will come undone very easily even after I put a ton of force on it. So it's going to make for a much easier takedown of this whole system when we're done. I'll put a detailed picture of this knot in the article that will accompany this video on the website. And then I usually tie a quick uh, fisherman's backup knot on this just to be sure that there's no way it's going to come undone as I'm using it. We're going to have a very large tail left over from this because uh, this is a small tree compared to what we could use. And I'm just going to toss that tail to the side and it's going to be out of our way. We're not going to worry about it. Now, one very, very important note before we move on is that if you're doing slack lines on the same trees consistently, you absolutely must put some padding around the bark of the tree. This tree's got a lot of tough bark and I'm only going to be out here doing it for just today, so we're not going to do any damage to it. But if you do this tick this technique consistently on the same trees, um, you're going to absolutely want to do that. Cardboard works well, as does uh, an old spare piece of carpet will do the same job. Step two is very similar. We're just going to walk over to our other tree and we're going to tie a quick bowline just like we did on the first one. Secure it with an overhand backup knot so it won't slip. We're going to slide the whole mess and the tail out of our way on the other side of the tree. The next part of the system is where we integrate our carabiners, have our two oval carabiners and one locking carabiner joined together just like these. Clip the locker directly onto the rope and then flip it around so that the wide part of the locking carabiner is facing outward against the, car the, the oval carabiners and then we're good to go for this step. Now that I have rope anchors secured on both trees, I'm going to stretch my line in between and bring this thing to life. What I'm going to do is begin at the first tree and walk over toward the second, all the while holding the webbing flat so that there aren't any twists or kinks in it whatsoever. Then when I get about two thirds of the way over, I'm going to tie in the piece of webbing what is called a girth hitch. And then once the girth hitch is tied, I'm going to take each of my non-locking oval carabiners and clip them through both loops of the girth hitch. Then I'm going to tighten the thing down and cinch it so that it lies perfectly flat and even. All right, here's a close-up of that girth hitch knot. So I have my flat piece of webbing coming in and I take the loose end and I make a loop out to my left side just like this so that it crosses underneath the main strand and then I create an identical loop on the other side. So what I have is two loops that end up looking very very symmetrical. Then these inner strands here that are running parallel, I'm just going to place one on top of the other like this. Then I take my first carabiner, clip it through both loops and then I take the second carabiner and follow just as I did with the first. Once I have that, I rotate the gates so that they're facing out and away like this. And then finally, I just cinch my knot down and it should end up laying very evenly and cleanly just like this. Okay, this is the part where things get really fun. Basically what I'm going to do now is create a block and tackle system that's going to stretch this piece of webbing super tight between each of these trees, but it's also going to be self-locking so that when I let go, my personal strength isn't holding it on there. The system of how these carabiners and pieces of webbing fit together does the work for me. So I'm going to show you close-ups of all this in a second, but basically what I'm doing is I'm looping back and forth to create a four to one mechanical advantage. And every time that I make a pass with my loops of webbing, I'm keeping them flat the entire time. But with each additional pass, I'm laying 
it underneath the one that comes before it. And that's what allows the whole system to lock down on itself. So there I do, I've got three passes. This is my fourth and final pass. Clip it through the carabiners and then shift it underneath so that my most recent pass lies underneath the whole system. So now, as you can see here, I got the one main line and four lines that are part of the mechanical advantage system. All I have to do is simply pull on this. And when I pull, I'm pulling with the strength of really four people, even though I'm just one person. And I can go all the way back, and every time I crank down, the line gets tighter and tighter and tighter, and the system locks it in place. So what I have here is an extremely taut piece of webbing between these two trees. I'm going to be able to put all of my body weight on this in a second. And uh, you can even, if you want to get it really tight, you can walk on the other side of the tree and pull on the webbing as you push with your foot. And that will lock it down even more. Okay, so here's the simple close-up explanation of how this thing works. Here in my left hand, I've got the girth hitch with the two oval carabiners attached. And right in front of me, I have the tree anchor. What I'm going to do is take the loose end and I'm going to go clip it into the tree anchor through both carabiners so that it comes in through the top and goes out through the bottom. Now what I'm doing here is I'm creating kind of a circular spiral with each pass of webbing that I make. So now I'm going to come back to these two sets of carabiners and I'm going to clip the webbing through. Again, keeping with the circular fashion. So I'm going to go in through the bottom and out through the top. And then I just keep repeating this. So now I go back to the tree anchor, clip it through, in through the top, out through the bottom. Now this is the really important part. When I make my second pass on either one of these, I clip it through first and then I just shift it so that the second pass lies underneath the first one. Then I go back here and I do the same thing. Clip it through both pieces and then shift it just like so. Now what this does is it creates a series of loops, each one wrapping around itself. The reason this makes it into an auto locking system is because when you put a heavy force on this, the webbing is actually pulling on itself. So it locks in place, it has nowhere to go. Now at the same time, by doing all these different loops, I have created a block and tackle system, which is a four to one mechanical advantage. So I just pull on this and it shores these up and tightens my line. Every time I pull on it, the line gets tighter and it self locks. So when I let go, I don't lose any of that tension. Okay, so this is my favorite part where I'm actually gonna go and hop up on and walk across this line. And uh, let me preface this with a couple things on the philosophy end. Doing this technique is a lot more about uh, your mental state of mind than the physical state of your body. You know, it's going to be just like learning to ride a bike for the first time, where initially you just don't know how to do it. It's very awkward and you can even have some fear and that sort of thing because your body simply doesn't know how to do what you're asking it to do. I guarantee you, if you're doing this slack line for the first time, you're probably going to experience the same thing. So my advice above everything else is just to be patient with yourself because this takes some time to get. It doesn't happen instantly. But uh, anyway, enough of me yakking. Let me go ahead and jump up on this thing and show you what it's all about. And uh, by the way, you're going to want to take some safety precautions when you do this because uh, it's easy to hurt yourself on this thing. You want to make sure that if you do fall off, you land on your feet. And the best way to do that, if you're a beginner, is to get a friend that can walk alongside you so you can put your hand on their, on their shoulder if you need to take some balance for a second. And uh, funny story, by the way, actually the worst pain I've ever been in in my entire life happened on a slack line and yeah you guessed it I racked myself really bad and uh, really hurt the family jewels and it wasn't because of falling down um, with a leg on either side it's because when you stand on this line there is a ton of tension on it and then if your feet slip off all that tension just 
it just whips upwards and it is the most excruciating pain um, that, that I've ever had. Um, so avoid that if you can. One way to avoid that is uh, if possible put the line so that it's below crotch level and you might end up bottoming out and if it's not tight enough but that's one thing you can do as a precaution. But uh, really if you be careful that that shouldn't happen. Okay so what you're going to do here uh, what I like to do is get close to one side and then um, put one leg up and then just in a swift motion you're going to transfer your other foot up and shift your weight onto the line and stand straight up. What you're going to want to do is go straight into wide angle vision and just be in as relaxed of a state of mind as you can and you're going to want to put your arms out to balance. You might flail at first and everything, that's fine, um, but really you're going to find that your torso ends up doing most of the balancing for you. So here we go. And the other thing is just breathe. Breathing gives you access to that relaxation. So I'm up, just finding my balance. Again, I'm, I'm totally in wide angle vision right now because that gives me the most ability to relax. And I'm just breathing and moving forward and starting to find my balance a little better. You know, my mind's scattered because it's on a lot of things like the camera, but it's okay. That's what these techniques are for. These techniques are for accessing awareness in yourself and in your surroundings. And then I'm basically just fox walking forward. And be patient with yourself. and you're feeling with your feet as you walk. All right, so I made it from one end to the other. And uh, by the way, I'm nothing in comparison to some of the experts that are out there on this thing, on uh, walking these slack lines. So I encourage you to do some research and to check that out because there are some amazing people out there that you know do everything from walking forwards backwards laying down on the line doing flips on the line I mean just crazy crazy stuff um, that's all definitely worth seeing but really you know the reason that I wanted to show you this technique today is because I've been doing a lot of thinking lately about uh, the survival skills and about the fact that as survival enthusiasts it can be very difficult sometimes for a lot of us to get out in the woods and uh, you know no matter who you are you're probably somewhat dependent on society so you probably don't live a life most of us don't where you can be out here all the time and so I've found you know things like this to be just one more tool you know one more way of putting yourself in a state of mind um, for me, what this gives me is relaxation and awareness. And I really appreciate that feeling because what it then gives me is appreciation for the wilderness, um, even if I'm not in the wilderness, which is cool because with this, you can put this up nearly anywhere. You can put it up in your backyard or in a park. You know, if you only have a half hour but you want to spend some time outside, this is an awesome, awesome methodology for doing that. And, uh, you know, really what all of this is bringing me to, I was thinking about this this morning when I was driving and uh, kind of rehearsing in my mind the point, the main point that I wanted to make of this whole video today when I was going to shoot it. And uh, what that point is, is that as survivalists, you know, we're always focusing on working with nature rather than against it and bringing that appreciation to it rather than expecting something out of our experience here. You know, it's not about fight, it's about working with and going with the flow. And so what that really leads me to is just kind of the idea of leaving the wilderness better than you found it. So every time you come out here, you know, do things to make this place better. Bring in a trash bag with you, pick up litter that you see, but anywhere you go and anything you do, anything you take from the woods, take in a way that actually helps it and helps the wilderness to be better. And so then the funny thing is when I was driving around this morning and kind of came to that realization, I was thinking like, gosh, that would be a really cool context to live all of life in, not just time in the woods, and to go into the world and uh, 
actively have the intention in my mind to make things better than I found them um, with everyone in my life and my surroundings and everything like that. And uh, then the funny thing that happened in that very moment was that uh, I have a friend I brought out here and I'm going to show him to you right now. In that very moment that I kind of figured that out <laughs> as I was driving, this guy here, Turtle Man, made a uh, mad dash across four lanes of very, very busy traffic on a very busy Brentwood Boulevard in St. Louis. And uh, yes, I was that guy. I held up four lanes of traffic with uh, people honking and screaming at me and everything just to, just to save Turtle Man here. And uh, anyway, I guess my whole point with it was just that uh, when you embrace that mindset, you know, you, you, you're comfortable in yourself to, to do things like that. And the result I got out of it was that uh, I learned a great lesson from this turtle today. And uh, he gets to avoid being a street pizza for, you know, another day. He gets another shot at life today. So I'm going to let him go out here. And uh, yeah, I know what all you guys are thinking. Turtle soup, right, for survival. Well, uh, maybe we'll cover that in a video in the future. But uh, I think for today, we're going to let him live. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Paul Scheider from Hedgehog Leatherworks. Be sure to check out our website and be sure to get on our newsletter. It's jam-packed with wilderness survival information, articles, videos, and everything like that. I've enjoyed spending this time with you and I look forward to speaking with you again soon.